Today we're going to talk about a major component in aggregate expenditure and we're referring to the component called household consumption. In the United States, about 60% of the expenditure is based on consumption alone. So in this video, you're going to understand the definition of household consumption and you are also going to learn mathematically how to calculate the total amount of consumption an economy has. So what is consumption? In the most straightforward manner, consumption is defined as the final purchase of goods and services by individuals or households. Now, it does not include any of the three following. It does not include work-in-progress goods, which are you know, maybe raw materials. It doesn't include investment products. And the next thing it doesn't include is um, imports. Now, the reason why imports are not included is because it is actually value flowing out of the economy. So we, we know that aggregate expenditure equals to income at equilibrium. So while import is flowing out of the economy, it doesn't become income to us. Therefore, imports is not part of consumption. I'm now going to introduce to you the concept of econometrics. Now, econometrics is not part of your syllabus, but me explaining this to you will help you to understand macroeconomics at a much better level. In a nutshell, econometrics is the application of math and stats to economic data. And for the purpose of this video, I'm not going to talk about statistics because I think it's just going to piss you off. So you can relax. There is a level 200 unit called Elements of Econometrics. So if you're interested, maybe you can choose that for your next year's um, units. So with Econometrics, you actually give an empirical content to economical theory or concepts. So what this means in the English language is that you actually have some sort of a numerical evidence to support certain economical concepts or theories. So this brings me to how economies generate functions for consumption, investment, government spending, and net exports. So they use what we call an econometric function. So econometric functions are all about relationships. And how this works is you take whatever variable you want to estimate. So in this case, we're going to talk about consumption. And we're going to call that the dependent variable. And it's called the dependent variable because the value of this variable depends on things like your parameters as well as explanatory variables. So in simple summary, the explanatory variables and the parameters are the ones that affect the dependent variable. Therefore, your dependent variable is a function of the two things that you see on the right hand side. So the dependent variable can be your consumption, investment, government spending or your net exports. So we're trying to estimate these components. So the relationship between the dependent variable and the explanatory variables are what we call economical relationships, like price and quantity, for example. And the parameters can be defined as the quantitative effects that the explanatory variable has on the dependent variable. If you're still confused at this point, not to worry. Just let me give you a simple example of an econometric function, which is y equals to beta naught plus beta 1 times x. So y over here is the dependent variable, beta naught and beta 1 are your parameters, and x is simply going to be your explanatory variable. I believe that you're starting to see that this is similar to a linear function, because when x is equal to 0, y is equal to beta naught. And when x is going to increase by 1 unit, y is going to increase by beta 1. So I believe you can see that the parameters beta naught and beta 1 give a quantitative effect to x and y. And I can actually plot this econometric function on the graph. So I'm going to have an upward sloping curve because the value of beta 1 is positive. So the blue line over here is the econometric function, and as you can see, the y-intercept is going to be beta naught, and the gradient of this curve is going to be beta 1. So this is clearly seen as a linear function, and um, that is how econometric functions work. It's very simple. Thanks for watching a sample of the Quickonomics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs. Simple to understand and captivating, so that you can learn effectively while saving time, realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quickonomics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials, and exam solutions in the form of videos, 
which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quicket Hours to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for studying with Quickonomics.